Okay, so we were in the chapter on diagonalization and we were looking at inner products, norms, orthogonality. In fact, last video we were looking at norms, introduced the norm. Okay. So, where were we? Pro we do the properties of the uh, uh, yeah, norm. Okay, so we, we told that the norm is the square root of the, of the inner product of the vector with itself. Okay, and the inner product that is well defined and it's a, a real number because the inner product of the vector with itself turns out to be a real number. Okay, a positive real number. Okay, so we have now some properties of norms. Firstly, the norm of the zero vector is zero. And also, the norm of a vector is greater than zero if the vector is not equal to zero. So, so it's real and positive, unless the vector is zero, in which case it's, it's zero. Okay. Um, it's got this sort of linear kind of thing where you type, multiply a vector by a scalar. Um, I think that's probably a complex scalar. And you get the magnitude of the of the scalar times by the norm, and then also there's like a triangular inequality. If you add two vectors, take their norm, that's always less than or equal to taking the norm separately and adding them. Okay, so we're going to have some proofs of this stuff. So the norm of the zero vector is, of course, the square root of zero with itself of the zero norm with zero in the product of zero with itself. So that's you know each component of zero is zero. So it's just zero times zero, but zero times zero, and so on. So it's square root of zero, which is zero. Now I take any non-complex um, for any any non-zero z. What is this saying? For any non-zero z. Oh, it's saying that when you have a complex number, the the when you times a complex number by its modulus, you get this means the real part of the complex number. This means the imaginary, that's a funny little, funny gothic I. It means the imaginary part of the real number. You get the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. The imaginary part means basically if the, num the number is z equals a plus bi, then we say that a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. So the imaginary part isn't actually imaginary. The imaginary part is the real number that you times by i for to get the bi bit. Okay? So then this is saying that this thing, right, equals a squared plus b squared. In fact, you can also say it like that. Okay? So this is the thing about complex numbers that we know. Okay. So, now if x is not equal to 0, it has at least one non-zero component. And has, oh, so this, so this argument that was something we've, done, we've looked at before, it's saying that when you take, take, you take the, modulus, the inner product of, a, of the vector with itself, well, it has one non-zero component, so at least one of those terms in this sum is strictly positive because it has this form, right? It's, it's something greater than zero, and the rest are non-negative. So they might be zero if those terms are zero, but they will be now negative or positive, so the whole thing is positive. We square root of positive numbers again positive. Okay, cool. Now this one. So, okay, you take an inner product of thing with itself, and then you get, of course, this whole thing, square rooted, uh, you could factorize out. So, in each of those terms, you have alpha x one, alpha x one conjugate. Now, the conjugate of a product is the same as the product of conjugates. They these are numbers, complex numbers. So the order of multiplication doesn't matter. So you get that. Okay. Now. That is just that. Okay. And so now you can pull that, pull this out of all the terms. Pull this um, modulus of alpha out of all the terms and out of the square root sign and loses the square. And you get this with this. And now that this is just the norm of that. Okay, so we have proved that equals that. And for three, we're not going to prove a, can provide a completely rigorous algebraic proof of the triangle inequality. Um, just realize it's equivalent to saying that the length of one side of a triangle cannot be longer than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. Okay, basically, because mm, it's equivalent to, I mean, it's equivalent to that if you're in R3, right? But it's basically saying something like this, okay, that if you go x and then y, that's always longer than just 
going straight from X plus Y straight. Okay. It's it's analogous to, uh, it's analogous to that. Okay. And I think I'll leave it there for this video.